In this lesson, we're going to examine methodologies for finding areas using the boundaries. And this is where the rubber really hits the road. This is where we start out doing some real initial statistics. Let's get it on. This picture should look very familiar to you. This is the standard normal distribution. Now remember the standard normal distribution is a normal distribution with mean of zero and standard deviation of one. Let us consider some methodologies for finding areas between boundaries. The problems in this section probably look something like this. What is the probability that z is less than 1.56? Now that's a way of saying what is the area uh, underneath the standard normal distribution curve for a z less than 1.56. We might have an area between two boundaries. We have a lower bounds of negative 2.41 and an upper bounds of 1.15. And we might have an upper bound z greater than 1.62. Don't despair. Hang on, and I think you will enjoy what we do with this. I'm going to share with you a five-step process by which you can learn to find areas using z-scores. The first thing that you do is draw the stinking picture. Now let me underline that, draw the stinking picture. Not just a picture, but the stinking picture. Label your boundaries, identify the area you're seeking, then establish what the tables give you, and come up with a plan, and all will be well. Hang on and watch how we do this. For our first problem, we're going to look at finding the area or the probability that z is less than 1.56. Now, there's some very subtle things here. A probability implies that there is a percentage of this area out here that we will be looking at. And if we have a 100% chance of selecting a data, the idea is that if we select a data, what is the probability that its z-score will be less than 1.56 standard deviations above the mean. Now, the first thing you want to do is draw the stinking picture. And you notice I've drawn a stinking picture. I've drawn a bell curve for the standard normal distribution, and I've labeled my boundary. My boundary is z equals 1.56. Now, in the third step, I want to identify the area that I'm seeking. You see my stinking picture my boundary, and then this is the area that I'm asked to find. I'm asked to locate the area where z is less than 1.56, and there it is right there. Once I've identified the area that I'm looking for, then I have to identify what it is that the table actually gives me. The table provides for a z-score all of the areas to the left, and lo and behold, that is exactly the area that I'm looking for. Isn't that fortunate? Now I just simply need to come up with a plan. Since the area that the table gives me is what I'm looking for, my plan is the probability that z is less than 1.56 is going to be the probability of 1.56 as provided in the table. Well, speak of the table, and here it is. Looking for the probability that z is less than 1.56, we would start out with the 1.5, which goes across here, and then we would go to the point zero 0.06 and come down, and right here is our probability that z is less than 1.56, and that's 0 0.9406, which I have listed as 94.06%. Remember that you can write a decimal in that percentage methodology, so the probability that a z score of a randomly selected data will be less than 1.56 is 94.06% or 94.06% of the time, that's what will happen. Let's try a problem which has two boundaries on it, where z is sandwiched between them. The first thing we do is draw the stinking picture and label the boundaries. Here's the lower bound, z equals negative 2.41, and here's the upper bound, z equals 1.56. Now we identify the area that we're looking for. According to our problem, we're looking for the area in between these two boundaries, the lower bounds and the upper bounds and the area in the middle. Using Muller's step, five-step plan, we need to establish what the table gives us. If we're looking for this area, we know that when we read these z-scores in the table, that if it gives us the z-score of negative 2.41, it gives us all the area to the left, 
And then it gives us on 1.15 all of the area from the left of that boundary. So look at the picture and see if you can come up with a plan of how you might use these two values to trap that area. You got it. The plan that you're going to use is you're going to take the area of z equals 1.15, which is all this area, and you're going to subtract from the probability of that area the area that z is less than negative 2.41 and that will give you the area that you seek. All we have to do now is find the area that we're looking for. We will take the probability that z is less than 1.15, and we go to 1.1, and then we go to 0.05, and we discover that that's 0.8749. According to our plan, we also need to find the probability that z is less than negative 2.41. So negative 2.4, 0.01, and we come down in the area that we seek there is 0 0.0080. Now we just plug these values into our plan. Remember our probability that z lay in this range was the probability that z 1.15 minus the probability of z negative 2.41. We found these values to be the probability of 1.15 and of 2, negative 2.41. We subtract them according to our plan and come out with 0.8669. And the probability that z lies in the range between negative 2.41 and 1.15 is 86.69%. That means that if we randomly select an x and we convert it to a z value, 86.69% of the time it will fall within this range. Isn't that cool? For our last problem, we're going to look at the probability that z is greater than 1.62. Again, we draw the stinking picture and we label our boundary where z equals 1.62. In our third step, we label the area that we're looking for, which is this area where z is greater than 1.62. Now we establish what the table gives us. The table gives us this area right here, but we in fact are looking for that area right there. Hmm, can you come up with a plan to find this area right there? You got it. Our plan is to take the entire area of 1 and subtract the area that the table gives us, and that will leave us the area that we seek. So the probability that z is greater than 1.62 is 1, which is the entire area under the curve, minus the probability that z of z being 1.62 which the table gives us that. So we take the entire area, we subtract this amount from it, and lo and behold, we have the area that we seek. Reading the table to come up with a probability of 1.62, we go from 1.6 down from 0 0.02, and we have 0 0.9474. We plug this value back into our plan, which our plan was the probability that z is greater than 1.62, would be equal to 1 minus the probability of 1.62, which is 1 minus 0.9474 or 0 0.0526, or in percentages, the probability that z is greater than 1.62 is 5.26%. That means that if we randomly select a z out of this entire population, there is a 5.26% possibility that that randomly selected x will have a z-score greater than 1.62. Wow, you're good. Back in the doghouse again. Well, now you know how to read areas under curve. Practice, practice, and practice. It makes perfect. Oh.